Right, our next speaker should be getting ready. Um, this is um, Richard Lee, who's going to go into, um, I think, a step-by-step -step process. Richard. Yeah, well, Roger asked me to um, uh, to do a, a piece on astral image J. I mean, I understand that um, OPS is the sort of industry standard in uh, in the BAA sort of world, but um, um, anyway, so astral image J, an alternative to time. Um, as you've seen already, this is the uh, the toolbar that um, comes up when um, when you click on the astral image J when you open Astro Image J. Um, I've decided to, uh, to split the, uh, the talk into two parts. So part one, um, we'll make that an introduction to Astro Image J, and it's like a sort of short form walkthrough of a, a workflow where there's all the, um, all the dialogues have been pre-filled where, where that's viable. <clears throat> Part two is a, a more sort of a detailed sort of walk through the um, the, uh, the software, and that, that ties in with the um, the workflow guide that um, um, some of you may have looked at. Uh, some differences between the the guide and, and what we're doing here is um, uh, I'll include some um, plate solving um, um, software um, and uh, a couple of other changes. And Richard, just to let you know, you're not actually in the slide view or we're not seeing the slide view mode. So I think it might need to resume slide just to make it sort of full screen. And it's back out of slide view. I mean, um, Rodney, I'm not sure what your view is, but I think perhaps to avoid further delay, shall we just carry on? Uh, in? I think it looks good enough as it is, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I can see it properly. I'm, I'm sorry you're... Uh... <laughs> Seen part of it. What, what it um, might be is there's different, you have a presenter view and you have a display view in. Yeah, no, I, so I, I, I suspect I there's that, a confusion yeah. somewhere between the two, but yeah. not to worry. Okay. Um, well, we'll move on. Um, yeah, okay. So um, I'm on sort of page two introduction to um, Asher is J. Um, yeah, so there's a, a list of, of uh, attributes, shall we say. It's um, uh, it's a Java application that's been developed um, at the University of uh, Louisville. Uh, and sorry to so, interrupt again, Richard, but I've got a feeling there might be something else going on here. Are you seeing your second slide at the moment? Yes. I'm we're not seeing your second slide. So we're just seeing your first slide at the moment. Um, when you did the share, did you do a share on your full computer or did you uh -huh. just take a picture? Yeah, now we're seeing. Okay, thank you. Is, is that working now, sir? Yeah, so we're now seeing your second, second slide. Second yeah, slide. Okay. I'll let you know if we don't see another one. So yeah, okay, no, I'm, I'm in the same mode as you now, so um, okay. well, that, uh, that went well. <laughs> um, yeah, where do we, where do we go? Um, uh, yeah, so the Astro Image J, uh, for, for quite a few years, it was um, it was kind of a one-man band or one-woman band. Um, um, Karen Collins at the University of Louisville was um, developing and maintaining the, uh, the software. An IT support. And um, the software has gone from version three to version five. Uh, and there's been some fairly major um, changes um, under the hood. Um, so I think the um, the future for the software is pretty pretty well assured now. Um, in that sort of safety safety line numbers, um, it's used by the Kelt Transit Survey. Um, um, there's a number of uh, undergraduate um, teaching labs that uh, use it. Um, Dennis Ponty has been championing. Um, Ashram is J for um, the AA, AA VSO, and um, it's used. Um, it's used by BAA VSS for um, a variable style uh, photometry. Okay, there's a list of a uh, few resources. Um, uh, there's the user guide that was uh, sent out. Um, um, Dennis Conti's guide, which. Um, 
um, which, is, which comes highly recommended actually. Um, then it gives a, a few alternatives. Um, the approach I take is to um, start at one end and go through to the other end and keep the blinkers on really without um, um, considering alternatives. Um, Dennis um, has a few alternatives along the way, so it's a, it's a good alternative um, uh, view of uh, AIJ. Uh, the form is quite active. Some of the tool tips can be very informative. Um, if you're lost in a really complicated um, dialogue, then the tooltips tool can be a bit of a, a lifesaver, really. And um, AIJ um, has a number of configuration files, which I'll come to, and they can help sort of streamline the, uh, the use of the software. So I don't know how clear that's going to be, but a typical workflow for um, um, the WASP 104 transit would be um, I think it was three sections really a sort of planning, um, data reduction, photometry, and then there's the, uh, the multi plot and the transit fit. So the, the output from a planning session would be um, an aperture file, which would then be imported into the photometry session. So uh, the uh, science files are reduced and uh, import it into the image viewer. You import the uh, apertures, run photometry, and then go into the, um, the uh, transit fit. And the output from that would be as in the sort of top right. So that's, that's the sort of AIJ equivalent to uh, some of the plots we've seen with, with hops. So the top, um, top plot is the raw data that's been detrended for air mass. Second plot, same data with the transit fit. Uh, there's a residuals fit, or the residuals from the fit. Um, next plot down is one of the comp, comp stars, uh, air mass and um, sky condition. So this was imaged under dark skies in Spain and um, just looking at the, the sky signal that was you know, fairly good sort of uh, viewing condition that night. So um, the way I thought I'd do this is in two parts. The, um, the first part is, is, is what's the least you need to do to, um, to run photometry with um, AIJ. So there's a lot of preparation that can be made to, to um, save sort of having to, well, just, just to, to simplify the, uh, the, the process. So there's a number of um, configuration files that um, uh, could be sort of preset and then reused for um, different transits. Uh, the main file would be the AIJ prefs file, and that contains just a whole myriad of sort of settings, which we'll come to. Um, if you were being asked to, um, to look at a specific star, then you might get um, a text file with the uh, data for that star. Uh, we'd want to, um, uh, we'd want to have a, Aperture file. Um, the plots can be really complicated, so having a plot configuration file streamlines uh, plotting the data and um, some of more data sets to, uh, to practice. So um, I've used as an example the um, MOS 104. Um, that was a um, I've called it Exo World, but um, I believe it's called Exo Clock. And that was a Exo Clock submission in 20, 2020, um, and um, so we're using that data. It's a 11.8 uh, VMAG um, for um, we're running a transit analysis in AIJ. the um, stellar radius or some stellar, uh, stellar data. Um, I'm getting a warning, by the way, that my connection is a bit unstable. Video. Um, yeah. So yes, yeah, so there's a couple of uh, inputs to the, uh, the transit, which you can look up on the, uh, the NASA exo exoplanet archive. 
Okay, well, I don't know when the dropout happened, but um, the gist of slide six is that um, you might have a sort of data set which relates to, um, in this case, WASP 104, 104B. Uh, and this is the, um, uh, the example sort of transit that we'll, um, we'll follow in the next, um, next slide. Okay, well, um, the first um, configuration file, the AIJ prefs.txt, um, that wraps up um, a field for rather complicated um, configuration dialogues. Um, so um, when you start AIJ, you would be um, uh, configuring these, these files on a sort of one-off basis. And um, um, you would hope not to have to sort of change the, uh, the settings on those too much. Um, so between them, there's a sort of general fits header settings, which is a fairly sort of minor one, but the, uh, the others are, are fairly complex. Um, the aperture photometry settings has a number of um, user related settings to, um, to do, but those are sort of one off for um, your um, uh, equipment um, specification. Um, the uh, CCD data processor is probably the, um, the most active of those, um, those windows, which you will sort of, which you will come to. Uh, so having an AIJ press file configures these on a sort of near once for all basis. Um, the other uh, file that's worth having um, clearly defined is a, is a plot configuration file. Um, the plot configuration or well, the multi-plot in, in Astro Image J, um, it's, it's quite a sort of daunting prospect, as we said. Um, so there's a couple of uh, dialogues on the left there, which um, control the number and um, position type of, of um, plots. So those two dialogues between them um, generate, between them generate the, uh, the right hand um, uh, transit and supporting uh, plots. Uh, so this is this is a sort of streamlined sort of version. So um, this is as close as I could get the um, uh, AIJ to being sort of hops equivalent. Um, so you've got sort of maybe half a dozen steps in there to uh, uh, to work from um, the data set through to an input into into multiplot. Uh, so the first steps are to uh, configure a couple of um, windows with the um, the target and to point to the, um, the folder containing the, uh, the raw science files. Uh, there's, no other, there's no other configuration needed for um, the uh, data processor window once it's been pre-configured. So you're ready to, uh, to run, the, um, uh, run the analysis from the uh, data reduction. Um, in the schemes that I'm recommending you you need to plate solve the images. And there are two options for plate solving. Um, there's ANSA, which is um, a local plate, plate solver, which is basically astron astrometry.net, but with a local form. Uh, and there's an option to use um, a very popular um, solver, ASTAP. Um, whichever solving solution you use, you you end up with the reduced science files where the uh, bias, dark, and um, flat correction has been applied. Um, uh, import those into the AIJ image viewer. Um, import um, the um, aperture set and run the photometry uh, process. The output from that is a um, rather large uh, text file, uh, the uh, measurements.table. And that's imported into, into multiplot. So we're in multiplot, and this is the, um, the, uh, the last of the um, sort of short form instructions. Uh, you'd import the, um, the table file into, um, no, actually, what you do is you review the, uh, the table file for uh, saturated uh, stars. So in this case, there's a window that's detected that um, the um, aperture number three, um, 
was uh, was flagging red in that window, so you would um, um, uncheck that star and remove it from subsequent analysis. Um, I would then go through uh, the plot of measurements. Um, um, the um, the WASP 104 was taken on a gem mount, so um, there's a medium flip to um, um, to manage, and then we'll put the data through the um, AIJ transit analysis um, window. This is coming on to the um, more sort of detailed um, um, window by window sort of um, handling of, of AIJ. I suppose there's, a, 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 there's been any questions uh, today I've sort of handled now, but um, otherwise I'll just sort of move along. Well, we don't seem to have any at the moment. Okay, um, I'll, I'll, I'll carry on. Yeah, I'll just plow on. Okay, thanks. Okay, um, so the first um, um, when you the first step is to set up your observatory um, in, in ARJ. So that's done in the um, uh, DP the um, DP um, coordinate converter uh, window. Um, uh, so you will set up um, in my case it's the ICA astronomy um, um, or, or in Spain. Um, and um, well, yeah, we're gonna. Uh, there's a second piece of software which is um, um, Planner Plugin um, or actual Observation Planner, and um, that's a um, that's a Java plugin which I've developed to um, support um, Astro Image J. Uh, so that runs. Um, directly from the uh, from the toolbar, and you would open that um, plugin and um, just cross check with um, um, with the plugin that it um, matches the um, uh, the observatory or the the, the fields match. Sorry, it's me garbled. Um, in the uh, the planner software that I've been talking about. Um, um, uh, you would sort of set up the uh, the date of the um, the observation, which in this case is the twenty seventh of uh, February, twenty twenty, and um, the plot there gives you the um, uh, the altitude over time for the uh, for the target for the WASP one hundred and four. Uh, so in this window, which is the um, target window in this this um, planner app that I've been referring to, um, the um, the user enters uh, WASP one hundred and four. And some other associated data from the, uh, the left hand side. Uh, run, a, run a query on the um, on the Simbad uh, database, and um, that populates the um, Simbad data uh, window uh, below. Uh, the next page would be on the next sheet, which is the um, catalogs tab for the um, uh, for the planner app. Um, You'll then run a, um, a query, in this case on the APAS um, uh, database. So that's the AAVSO APAS database. Um, you can choose between VSP and APAS, but for um, transit, um, APAS will produce just a whole lot more results. Um, on WASP 12, which is the, um, uh, the data that's supplied. I, um, which, which you can download from the AIJ um, home directory, uh, you'll get something like 200 um, records for the, uh, for the same query. Uh, so the, uh, the raw query produces a table, in this case of um, 36 uh, results. Uh, so the left-hand side provides, some side of this dialogue provides some um, Facilities for um, uh, 
of filtering the records down to a more sort of manageable number. So on the left hand side, we've got the data set is sorted by distance, um, a record of the, um, the uh, filters applied, which is now at the moment, um, and um, just a sort of sanity check that the, uh, the query data uh, is, is as uh, requested on the previous page. So we applied some filters, and that's um, reduced the total records from 36 down to seven. Uh, the one thing to note is that um, one of the records will be a, a duplicate because it doesn't, well, one of the records would have been a duplicate of the target. So we've removed that, um, that duplicate from the records or from the, um, we've disabled it from the use column. Um, there's another star which, um, which will be a bit suspect, which is the uh, CO3. And that's, that has a relatively low magnitude, so it's rather a bright star. And uh, we might find that, well, we'll find later that, that that star is saturated and we'll remove it from the, um, from the star ensembles, which are a process in the uh, photometry analysis. Uh, so yeah, that's right. So on, on the left, we're, we're getting the, um, that's the filters applied. And below that would be the, um, uh, the results of applying those filters, which is to um, reduce the uh, total records from 36 down to seven. And then we've uh, deselected one of those. So the number of uh, selected records is six. And that shows on this um, um, that's a VSP chart that's been imported um, with the same software um, and with the apertures able overlaid so you, you get a, a direct sort of feedback of, of the um, the aperture records and and how they're going to look on the um, on the star chart. Um, same page has sort of facilities for um, saving the data set to an RA deck sort of file. And there's a file that be imported into um, into ARJ, and you can reload those files back into this window. So um, you can save and um, edit as um, as needed. There's another function which is to um, download a, um, I think it's a digital sky survey um, plot for the area of interest. So this is um, the DSS image for the WASP 104 over the region of interest. And we've um, imported the apertures over, the, over this plot. So it acts as a sort of sanity check that um, the apertures and the um, um, the expected image are, are going to sort of tally when you come to um, to do the analysis on on your image set. So now we're sort of into the data processor window. So this is the uh, start of the uh, data reduction. Uh, these are a one-off sort of setting, so it will be in this press file I was talking about. Um, there's a range of settings there. Um, the recommended settings would probably be to sort of medium combine, just to avoid sort of too much distortion from hot pixels and, and the like. And um, yeah, it's the usual sort of data reduction, um, the uh, bias and dark subtraction and um, flat division usual sort of suspects. Um, and there's just one setting to change on this um, on this on this page uh, day to day, which is the um, um, uh, which is to um, navigate to and, and select the um, the raw science files folder. So the, um, the configuration I've suggested using is to have two folders, which is um, raw science files and calibration files. And um, AIJ can um, filter out the, um, the relevant uh, calibration files from the file names. Uh, so in my case, by, by using a star bias star, dark, star dark star and flat underscore V star, it's um, file names that, um, that's sufficient for it to uh, detect 200 um, 
um, science files and the, uh, the associated um, calibration files. And um, the zeros tell us that uh, we haven't run the, um, the calibration yet, or the, we haven't run the, uh, the process yet, so we haven't built the, um, the, uh, the master files. Uh, the other point to make here is that um, there's a DP, the uh, coordinate converter window um, to, uh, in, to, to, to load that with the Z-Wars 104 um, target. And that will then automatically um, load the, uh, the coordinates. Uh, what's new to uh, this data set compared to the, uh, the WASP 12 data set is um, there was a meridian. No, I'll, I'll rewind. What's different is that um, these um, files need to be plate sold. Um, what I'm showing here is the um, um, setup screen which is built into AIJ for running ANSVER. Now, ANSVER is the, um, um, is the local version of the astrometry.net plate solving um, the online solver. Uh, it's enormously quicker than, than running online. Um, it takes maybe sort of tens of minutes to, um, to run a, maybe 10 minutes to run a, um, a set of um, images, 10 or 20 minutes. Uh, the same set run online could take sort of several hours. So it's, um, it's a worthwhile improvement. Um, uh, there's a few sort of configurations which are sort of highlighted here that um, we need um, an internal um, password that will be a um, server address, internal server address. Um, there's some configuration settings which adjust the, um, um, or set it up for your place scale. Um, and it automatically picks up the, um, uh, the center of the image from the, um, uh, from the target coordinates. So we've configured the, um, the plate solver. We've um, set up the, um, we're pointing to the, the right folder. We found the um, uncalibrated files and press start. And the first thing it would do is just sort of run, some, run through and, and uh, Generate sort of master uh, calibration files, and you can see those as, as clicking up as one on the, uh, the right hand side of that screen. Um, I don't know whether you can see a cursor actually, they probably can't, um, but they've ticked up to one. Um, and I've uh, interrupted the, um, the process, so it's sort of midstream, it's done 37, and it's got another 163 to do. Uh, so you can pause uh, and resume the, uh, the process. Um, with the plate solving, this will probably take, um, probably take about 10 minutes, I suppose. And at the end of it, you'll have a set of three um, calibration, uh, master calibration files, uh, and they don't need to be repeated. So the subsequent runs, um, the, um, the build can be uh, disabled for those, um, um, for those files. Uh, and um, and then you can sort of rerun without having to rebuild the uh, calibration file. Um, a quick plug for a plugin. Um, um, Aztat is a, is a very popular um, plate solving software. It is using any number of, of um, astronomy um, applications, um, but it's not used in Astronomy J. Um, so it's a plugin which um, uh, links um, Astronomy J to um, uh, to an open install version of ASTAP. Um, uh, and ASTAP runs, well, the first thing to know is it's, it's, it's a very small sort of disk footprint. It's about one gigabyte, which is a lot smaller than a typical ANSFER install. Uh, and it runs from five to 10 times quicker. So um, those 200 um, WASP 104 files would probably take a couple of minutes to, uh, to solve. Um, it's a little less convenient because it's not integrated into um, uh, AIJ in the same way, but um, um, you can access it directly from the uh, toolbar and um, 
it seems to be pretty reliable. And as I say, it's, it's, it's very widely used. Uh, I think there's a, a good chance that um, future versions of AIJ will be in two days' time. Um, this might look a bit familiar. Um, uh, this is the old left click on a um, on saturated star plot, so that gives you the um, uh, the aperture sizes that uh, we've seen before, um, and that will be imported directly into um, into the relevant windows in um, in AIJ. So the um, in some of the left, it's confirmation that um, um, if you click the, the save apertures button, then those apertures are um, uh, imported directly into the, the relevant uh, windows. Uh, come to the image viewer. This, that's the main window in, in Astro Image J. Um, one thing to point out is that there's four icons which need to be depressed. There's set the um, uh, the apertures, types, and um, annotations and, and such like. Um, uh, from here, you'll you'll open the first image or import the uh, stack of images. Uh, there's an option to um, um, to scroll or to to scroll through the through the images. So the uh, you can play through the image set. So if you're looking for um, image quality, you click on the the, the lower left um, play icon, and that will um, um, run a uh, that will that will run through the uh, run an animation of the um, of the of the images, and you can stop the animation and um, remove a, a bad image or a collection of images from the um, uh, from the stack. Um, from the screen, you would import the uh, the apertures. Uh, so that was the um, the aperture set that we uh, created before. And on the right hand side, that's the uh, um, uh, that's the VSS chart that um, uh, matches up with the the image viewer chart. So from here, you'll, you'll have the apertures loaded. Start the process, and the output from that process is is the uh, measurements table file. That's a, a, an example of a measurements table file. Um, there's a huge number of uh, fields which stretch off to the right. Uh, I've highlighted um, one of the records where the um, um, the saturated field um, highlights a um, uh, an issue with with that record, um, and um, that was the um, the C3 um, aperture that we were sort of concerned about. File is a tab delimited um, delimited um, file, so you can open that in just about any spreadsheet known to, to man. And uh, yeah, uh, so the next page is just sort of showing the effect of, of um, disabling the saturated style. So the uh, C3 is saturated, click on that, and uh, that will be removed from the um, um, image analysis. Multiple windows. Um, so again, that's the um, uh, sequence of um, transit um, fit and um, sky condition uh, plots on the right-hand side. Um, the left-hand plots, um, they're undeniably complicated, and I've spent some time in the, um, the user guide um, sort of walking through these um, windows. I, I think if anybody's sort of interested in using um, AIJ, and the first port of call is to, to use a configuration file, uh, the next port of call is to um, uh, sort of plow through the, um, um, the multi-plot um, section of, of the uh, the guide. Um, it, it's just quite complicated. Um, um, the, the window set the number of, of um, plots you can 
show um, the spacing between the plots, the, um, um, the nature of the color plots, um, the Y data sets um, um, detrending um, uh, characteristics and um, Yeah, so um, I don't know how clear it is, but the 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 transit is um, detrended by hair mass, and there's also a um, um, meridian flip detrend. So the meridian flip is a um, pale blue line just to the right of the um, of the red line of the left hand red line. So the meridian flip occurred during the um, the um, Ingress, I suppose, which is not a good place to, to flip, but uh, yeah. Um, and um, so the software would make an attempt to, um, to balance the two sides of the, the transit around that, um, around that line. And Richard, just to let Richard. you know, we're approaching three o'clock, but I suggest we run over by a few minutes as you had the IT problems, and it'd be good to give time for a question or two. Okay, well, I think I'm fairly near the end and uh, I'm quite happy to yeah in fact that's the last slide so that was good fun yeah so I can leave it there if you like um, I'll just maybe just pick up on this this is the um, yeah, I'll, do that. I'll just pick up on this slide and then and then um, call it quits um, so on the plot of measurements there's a, um, a very detailed um, legend which um, Describes, as I say, in almost excruciating detail, the um, um, the process is applied to um, each of the uh, the plots. So some of them are fairly simple, just the trends, or um, in the case of the uh, the sky plots and air mass, the um, um, that they've been arbitrarily um, scaled. Um, the um, the transit plot um, uh, has um, all the um, transit fit um, parameters included in that um, in that header so that's a complete sort of record of the um, the uh, the fit that was applied to obtain the, um, the transit curve there and uh, if you like I'll, I'll call it um, call it quits there and if you have any questions on um, um, okay okay thank you um, thank you, Richard. I'm just looking at the, the chat box now. I, we had a question earlier on, which seems to have been well answered, um, about configuration piles um, allowed for the use of CMOS cameras, as well as the presented uh, CC data processor directory that you showed on slide number 17. That's been answered well. Um, the answer is there in the chat box. Um, is, is it worth reading that out for, particularly for the recording, which will go online? I could do. Yes, that's a good 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 point. Um, so the well, the, it's pretty much what I said. Does the configuration pile allow for the use of CMOS cameras as well as the presented CCT data processor directory shown in slide seventeen? And the answer is not directly, but you can do an easy workaround by building a master flat first using a flat dark, dark flat, uh, with the same exposure as the flat. So that seems to be the right, that seems to be an answer which is uh, accepted. Um, just having a look down. There's another discussion about um, Simon Dawes has a lot of experience with um, uh, CMOS. He's done over 60 transits with CMOS and uh, reckons that any theoretical issues treating CMOS differently to CCD um, don't seem to uh, interfere with his practice. 